Former President Donald Trump took his anti-immigration rhetoric to a shocking new level today at a rally in New Hampshire. He said that immigrants are, quote, poisoning the blood of our country using language that is often employed by white supremacists. Uh, CNN Steve Contorno joins us with more. Steve, uh, sounds like uh, some, some of the stuff that we've heard from Trump before, but it was really kind of on steroids today, the way he was doubling down, tripling down and adding uh, some really insensitive layers to his usual rhetoric. What more can you tell us? Yeah, that's right, Jim. In some ways, it felt like if you had, you would be forgiven if you thought you had walked into a Trump rally in 2015 and not 2023, because so many of the themes were reticent of the kind of language he was using eight years ago. And when it came to discussing uh, undocumented Americans in, in general and, and, and undocumented migrants, it was particularly dark and often using this language that has been adopted by, by white nationalist groups and roundly criticized by civil rights leaders. And this is something we've heard more and more from him lately as he gets closer and closer to this campaign, uh, being people starting to actually vote. Take a listen to what he had to say today. They're poisoning the blood of our country. That's what they've done. They poison mental institutions and prisons all over the world, not just in South America, not just the three or four countries that we think about, but all over the world. They're coming into our country from Africa, from Asia, all over the world. They're pouring into our country. Now, along with this rhetoric, also came some policy proposals, including a travel ban on, quote, terror plague countries, uh, ideological screening for all immigrants and, quote, the largest deportation operation in American history. Now, a lot of these are things he said he would do when he was elected president in 2016, and he either ran into the American legal system or political uh, uh, trouble, including with some Republicans, or just sort of dropped off entirely on. And, and that is one of the criticisms that we have heard, especially from Governor Ron DeSantis. He has no problem with the rhetoric or the policies of President Trump. He has said that Trump didn't do enough uh, when he was president. He was just here a day ago in New Hampshire as well, and he was telling crowds that he would actually be uh, more effective at accomplishing the Trump agenda than Trump himself, Jim. Essie, uh, let me start with you, your reaction to Trump using uh, white supremacist uh, Klan language. I mean, there, there aren't any dog whistles here. This, this is with a bullhorn, no. the kind of language that he's using. Yeah. He's not winking or nodding. Um, like you said, um, he's he's out and proud, um, as as it were. Uh, and I think that's because um, not only is this kind of a go to for him, but his base has has condensed. It's still very loyal and rabid. We know that. But it's condensed. The folks that might have come on board, maybe a little skeptically for the first go round, for all the normal reasons, maybe economic policy, taxes, regulations, they're all gone. They're gone because they don't want the uh, the freak show and these, you know, the, these kinds of, of, of storylines that come along with Trump. So all that's really left are sort of like the conspiracy theory crowd and folks that would respond to this. And so exploiting white fright um, is, I think, something you're probably going to hear more from Trump over the next year as he's, you know, uh, running, running for president again. Yeah, I mean, Molly, uh, Trump also today vowed to investigate prosecutors across the country, he vowed to indemnify police officers as they crack down on crime. He called January 6 prisoners, quote, hostages again. Uh, he also predicted that Americans will flee the country in droves if he wins the upcoming election. Let's listen to that one. As soon as we win, uh, you know what's going to happen. People are going to flood out of the country. They're going to flood out before we even do anything. They're going to leave the country. What kind of a campaign uh, platform is this? <laughs> well, I think one of the things that Trump is trying to do, which he did successfully in 2015, 2016, and he has not been able to recapture, is he wants that free media, right? In 2016, he had he got free media by saying crazy stuff, and he'd have that, you know, it ended up being more than a billion dollars worth of free media, where he'd say something crazy, then there would be the backlash, that would get coverage too, then there would be, you know, he doesn't really mean it, you know, it would be a whole, like, 
about four news cycles. At, you know, he'd say this thing about the blood of our country and it would get him so much free media. So I think there are two things happening here. What I think uh, Essie was saying is right, that he knows that the people who really will go for him are those George Wallace types, the kind of people for whom you know, they've never had a mainstream politician, or at least not for a long time, saying the quiet part out loud like this. And so they're very galvanized by it because they truly do believe in this kind of horrendous rhetoric. And then I think the other is that he's just trying to get those outrage news cycles going again because he rode them to victory in 2016. Now, I'm not sure it would, even if he could get them going, they would work for him now because he's been doing this for so long. But I do think that's inadvertent or advertent his goal. Yeah, I guess, I see the question I have, though, is how does this help Donald Trump win in places like the suburbs of uh, Philadelphia uh, or in yeah. Michigan uh, or right. in Wisconsin? You know, you, in Michigan, you have um, an Arab American community that is upset with uh, Joe Biden over Israel. Yeah. And they hear Donald Trump go out there on the campaign trail and say that immigrants are poisoning the blood of of the United States. I mean, obviously, I, how does this work for him? How does he win back these voters who left him in droves in 2020? Right. I, I think he's probably written them off. I, I don't I, I haven't seen and, you know, we've we've wa watched him and covered him extensively. I haven't seen him saying or doing anything really to reach out to those voters, the voters in, you know, the Tony Detroit suburbs that he won in 2016, that I, I, I was frankly very surprised he got a lot of those voters in, you know, leafy suburbs of Cleveland, for example. Um, I don't think he's trying to get them back. I think he's saying good riddance and I'm going to double down on the base that I have, which is why I think you're going to hear more and more of this, because he needs every one of them to show up at the polls to make up for all of the sort of moderate, you know, country club Republicans and certainly the independents that that are just not here for for this again. Yeah. And Molly, uh, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis is predicting Trump will, uh, what Trump will do if he loses the Iowa caucuses next month. It was kind of interesting to hear Ron DeSantis say this. Let's listen to it. If Trump loses, he will say it's stolen no matter what. Absolutely. He will he will he will try to delegitimize the results. Uh, he did that against Ted Cruz in 2016. Um, and he will do that. I mean, even when, like, The Apprentice didn't get an Emmy, he said it, he said. So so I think I don't think there's been a single time he's ever been in competition for something where he didn't get it, where he has where he's accepted. I don't think he will do that. So I think he's doing that. Um, I think that that's to be expected. But I don't think people are going to buy it. Now, there are about seven people standing behind Ron DeSantis as he was saying that versus the, the hundreds or thousands that were in Manchester as Trump was talking about poisoning the blood of our country. But it is fascinating to hear Ron DeSantis essentially say that Trump is a sore loser who lies when he loses. Yeah, I mean, I think if DeSantis, if DeSantis had said stuff like that when he was ahead way at the beginning of his campaign, <laughs> he would have been offering an alternative to Trump versus like this sort of watered down version of Trump, Trump policies, but further to the right without the charisma. So, yeah, it's great that Ron DeSantis has gotten so brave, but he's doing it as like a Hail Mary pass. So I think it kind of undermines his message. But I do think I, I hate to say it. I agree with Ron DeSantis. Yeah, and SC, I mean, it's interesting. I, I guess the expectations game has already started. Uh, Matt Gates is out there campaigning for Trump. He's expressing some concern. Uh, take a listen to what he told voters uh, in Iowa last night. My only worry is low turnout. I don't want our folks, I don't want our fellow patriots thinking, well, a caucus is a little different than an election. I don't know if, how that really works. I don't know what I have to do. Are they trying to set the stage for Trump maybe underperforming in Iowa or getting caught by surprise? And so, you know, Trump yeah. voters don't know how to caucus or something. Is that what Matt Gates is saying? Yeah. I don't understand. what. Yeah. yeah. And, and Matt Gates is, is parroting Trump. Trump earlier uh, this week, I believe, was saying the same exact thing, that it's about turnout. And if they don't get the turnout, you know, it, it's, you know, going to make a big difference. And so, yeah, I think they are worried about turnout. And I think in addition to that real practical concern, I think, you know, Trump is such a showman, right? I think he's worried about the perception that if it's close 
in Iowa, for example, um, that he'll lose that momentum and gain, you know, lose lose this this very wide gap he has in the polls right now between him and his nearest competitor, whether it's Haley or or DeSantis, given the poll. I think he's worried about what that will look like and what that will say. And so, yeah, I think he wants yeah. to lower expectations, but also really drive turnout. 